What is up everyone? Welcome back to another video. Just wanted to do a super quick video, hopefully a quick video, <laughs> uh, about the new Battle Scroll that came out. I've had a chance to kind of, you know, collect my thoughts, read through everything, and I thought I would just kind of go over some of the changes and the um, the points updates and the Battle Scroll itself, and we got some new FAQs. Not everything is super important, but I will. I, I did want to touch on everything that I thought was relevant. Um, so, but before we go into that, they, they did um, put out this article. It's on the Warhammer community site. Uh, you can check it out if you like, but basically at the end of the day, they're basing their data off of these win percentages that they've collected. And essentially anything outside of this, uh, outside of the, uh, or above rather, a 55% win rate, they consider to be out of whack, right? So we, out of whack in terms of too strong, in their opinion, is Disciples of Zeech, Gloomspite Gits, Flesh Eater Courts, Caradron Overlords, and Lumineth Realm Lords. Okay, so we should probably elephant in the room this a little bit. The, these, the data set that they collect is based off of very limited information. There's not a lot of games played, and we don't even like have the sort of skill level of each individual player. So I think a lot of this has to be taken with a huge grain of salt. But having said that, um, most of the armies that are kind of way down here, right, are um, are are going to see, you know, they need to change, and that's where GW has concentrated on. And then there's also some uh, armies that are not going to get touched, like like Seraphon, like um, like so like Grave Lords, like OBR, uh, because they are about to get a new book, right? So that's understandable. It would have been nice if they had done like a little bump, even to armies that are just like, like Skaven, like, you know, I mean, I have, I shouldn't choose Skaven, but like Skaven or Sylvaneth or, you know, uh, not Soulblight, but it's <laughs> so like Slaves to Darkness, even if they have like, they're not that far off of where we want them, just like a slight bump, like pick a unit right? Like, like spite revenants for Sylvaneth, right? Like, so they're really near to the top and then just give them a very small change, right? Slight bump in points, help them out just a tiny bit. And then we might see a little more variety. And it, I think it'd just be a little bit more interesting if they were just kind of doing little bumps here and there, because already this data set isn't perfect. That's my thought. What do you guys think about that? Uh, I'd be really curious. Uh, just like a slight change, um, and that way we maybe get a little more variety and there wouldn't be just one way of building an army, it feels like, right? So anyway, let's go into the uh, Battle Scroll itself. These are some big changes and I like both of them, but I'm not sure everyone will. I know that, you know, like some people are not going to, you know, like it's there's a natural tendency to just kind of see it from your own army's perspective, from your own perspective. The grass is always greener, but... Um, I think for the health of the game, this is really great. So as usual, colors, the color magenta um, means that it's a new change, right? So here we go. 7.2 Hero Phase Command Abilities Rally. Add the following text to the end of the rule. You can only return models to that unit that have a combined wound characteristic of 10 or less. For example, if the unit you receive the command has a wound characteristic of 2, you can return a maximum of 5 models to that unit. So... That's really um, that's really cool change because it stops like there's a lot of um, four up rallies out there now, so that's gonna really help with some of the more ridiculous interactions like in Daughters of Cain, Gloom Spike Gits, just to name a couple, right? Um, then the other change is something that we thought was gonna come a long time ago. It's the change to Arcane Tome, um, so it's now changed changed to. Hero that does not have the wizard, priest, or corn keyword. So they went after corn, especially there. Uh, I'm not sure that was necessary, but it makes sense flavor wise. They probably should have just had um, something in the army, like itself, that kind of said that. But hey, this is where we are now, right? Um, you could even make the, the argument in terms of dwarves. They, they were traditionally sort of anti-magic or something, I think. But, but who cares? This is where we are. So you can't give a wizard an extra spell. 
Uh, you can't give a priest the ability to become a wizard. Um, so verisimilitude wise, you know, this, this changes things. And I think the reason I think it's a good thing is because Arcane Tome was so good. It was just like, okay, I start off with Arcane Tome and then where do I go? Do I have something in my army that's even better than this amazing artifact? Or if not, I'll just default to Arcane Tome. Um, so that's, I, I actually think this is a good idea. Um, so also now it's uh, the bear becomes a wizard that only only knows. So that text is there. You can't ignore it. It says only knows Arcane Bolt and Mystic Shield. So I don't think we're going to see this much anymore. It'll be interesting. Like this might be a little bit of an overkill kind of situation, but we'll see. Anyway, if it says if you take a spell lore enhancement, you cannot pick any spells from that spell lore for the bear to know. So they're really hammering home. You really can't do it. They can attempt to cast one spell in the hero phase and attempt to unbind one spell in the enemy hero phase. Um, yeah, we'll see. But, you know, yeah, this is where we are now. Um, and then for Cruel Boys. Um, so this is interesting. They actually added to the battle scroll essentially what's already on the um, Cruel Boys FAQ or Orif War Clans. Maybe this is because people don't, you know, like they didn't do this with anything else. So I'm curious as to what you guys think. Again, if you don't know where to go, you go to, you can just Google search uh, either Age of Sigmar FAQs and then you go to the website, right? And actually here, I'll show you right now uh, before I forget. So if you go to uh, the, the, the website, if you just Google, uh, Age of Sigmar FAQs or Warhammer 40k FAQs. It doesn't really matter. Whichever one you Google, up first is Warhammer 40k, which is interesting because it used to actually be Age of Sigmar. Um, but anyway, so then you just come over and there's like an arrow on the right here. You can't see it because <laughs> I made it the screen so you could read as clearly as possible. But there's an arrow to the right. If you keep going, if you look over here, actually, can I just click? Oh, never mind. You can just click on Age of Sigmar. There you go. Bam. So then up pops the FAQs and it will tell you the date that they came out. If you just look right here um, and it goes because they're in Britain, it goes uh, day, month, year, right? Not here, not like how you say the words like month, day, year. Um, so just be warned that way, you know, if you've got a new one or not, like if you're down here and it says February 15th, then uh, assuming you already know what's, what's going on there, you probably don't have to look at it. Okay. So anyway, back to this um, this battle scroll update. They've done two changes to Cruel Boys specifically because they their win rate is so abysmal. They keep changing things to Cruel Boys and it keeps not working. So we'll see uh, what happens. Um, so the first change is uh, Dirty Tricks. You basically get two of them now, just to like cut through the fat here. So. Now you can basically always take minus one to wound in the first battle round and something else, like which is probably what most people are going to do um, because the other ones are just so unreliable. Um, but now it's going to be fun. Like I'm, I'm probably going to go with minus one to wound and then maybe um, the booby trapping the, uh, what's it called, the terrain, just because that's super fun. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's the first change. And then the second change is to gut rippers themselves. They're, they're not great, right? They're really just still, you know, the, the changes that they made, they're still just kind of brutal, right? Low save and and just kind of too expensive So for what they do. So now it's Gut Rippers change the scare tactics ability, love that uh, spelling, to minus one from hit roll was with melee weapons by enemy units that are not heroes or monsters that target this unit. So basically, if you roll up with a bunch of blood knights or something like that, then they become minus one to hit. Um, and you know, so unless they're a monster or a hero, uh, I wouldn't have minded if they kept the monster thing on there, as long as they're not a hero or something like that, just because monsters, you know, like, I don't know, cruel boys are for, like, they feel have this kind of gurish feel. It feels like they're kind of, they should be kind of a little bit anti-monster, you know, like liberators or something like that. But Hey, this is what we got. I'm cool with it. It's interesting. Um, and then we go down to the, the points changes. So these are all the points changes that happened. And, uh, yeah, it's really interesting. So I like that they didn't, for the most part, <laughs> uh, 
um, only do nerfs. So the only ones that got just straight up nerfs were Night Haunt, or Night Honk, as Dale likes to call them, uh, which they got it for Hex Wraiths, um, are plus 10, which was interesting. I wasn't seeing them that much. And Dread Scythe Herodins, which I wasn't seeing as much as some other things, but I don't want to bring it up. Uh, I'm not sure why Night Haunt got targeted. They are in the sub 50% win rate, or maybe that's just because they're not just basing it off of that data, right? If they're just basing it off that data, then shouldn't they have gotten some kind of bump in another section, like maybe to more Banshees or some other such thing? Anyway, I'm not sure why I started on the right there. Um, but so we'll go back to Luminous Realm Lords. <clears throat> the Hurricane uh, Spirit of the Wind, minus 10. Um, the Cathalar, plus 10. Minus 20 from Severeth, uh, Archmage, Techless. He went up 20. That's really interesting. Uh, Wind Chargers, plus 10. And Sentinels, plus 10. The Sentinels are like the only one, <clears throat> and maybe you could argue Techless, that are, were, were kind of not obvious, but expected. Um, yeah, but I, I am glad to see that they did some other changes as well, like to the Spirit of the Wind. Then we go down to Beasts of Chaos. Now... Beasts of Chaos 2, if we look back over here, right? <clears throat> uh, Beasts of Chaos, I, I'm almost positive, are at a sub. Where are they? Are? Where are they? I can't locate them. Are they plus? Beasts of Chaos. Oh, here we are. Beasts of Chaos. So they're 53%. It's kind of weird that they <clears throat> actually had in my mind that they were at a subpar win rate. Um, Doom Bull... I guess it's such an auto include that people are just taking him every time. So I, I get it. Bestigors, I'm really glad they went down 20. They, you know, I could see an argument for them going down more. And Bulgors are, they hit hard. I, I get it. I do get it. I do. I just wish they made maybe a couple other changes, you know, because I don't know. Increase, let's increase some variety, you know? Anyway, uh, Disciples of Zeech. Uh, now, Disciples of Zeech were out of whack, right? Cursling, plus 20. Fate Master, plus 20. Flux Master, plus 10. Magister, plus 20. And Magister on uh, Disc of Zeech, plus 20. Um, I mean, Zeech is, you know, typically heading up the top of the win rate. So I guess this makes sense. Um, you know, I, I'd I would have liked to see just some kind of bump for something you just never see. But hey, this is where we are, right? I'll try and stop mentioning it. Uh, Slaves of Darkness, though, all good news for them. Chaos Knights, minus 10. Chaos Warriors, minus 10. Uh, Chaos Lord on Karkadrak, minus 20. Demon Prince, minus 25. That's fantastic. Uh, Nurgle Demon Prince, here we come. Uh, Eternus, Blade of the First Prince, uh, minus 25. Ogroid, Theradons, minus 20. Uh, very interesting. I didn't expect them to get quite such a change. You know, now I know from... Um, my buddy Eric, who plays them and really likes them, that they are not easy to win rate. And we can see right here, they've got a 47% win rate. Um, but I'm just curious because we didn't see any changes to Aiden of Deepkin, who have a 46% win rate, or Iron Jaws, who have a 46% win rate. And neither one of these guys are getting, you know, a book anytime soon, but we're not seeing any changes over here. So I'm not really sure, you know, they certainly don't blame it in, or, or use just the points to figure this stuff out, right? Uh, anyway, Night Haunt, I already talked about. And then Gloom Spike gets some really big changes. Scragrot the Loon King, plus 50. That's like over a 25% increase, or way more than that, actually, if you consider where he started. Um, yeah, that's a lot. I don't I don't know what's going to happen with him. He, he does do a lot, but I don't think I'm going to be taking him. But I'm going to experiment. I'm not going to make any rash decisions. Uh, Squig Boss on Nash's Squig is actually where I have the biggest problem. Plus 20, making him a 100-point hero. He's a four-wound guy on a six-up. Um, and in, in a non-Galatian champion world, that dude is way overpriced. Like, he dies to a fart, right? And he still does if you have Galatian sharpshooters. So I actually don't think that's a good change at all. Um, but anyway, uh, he, does, he does do a really great buff. But, you know, anyway. Anyway, so... Loom Boss on Mangler Squigs, minus 30. Yeah, at least that. I would actually have done minus 40. I would have put him at like 330 tops. Um, he's just so expensive and he dies so easy. But he, he can smash. But he's just random, you know. And as soon as he takes some damage, he gets a lot worse. Um, yeah. 
but he, you know, it's interesting. I, I am going to experiment with him a bit. Gobblepalooza plus 15. I think this is probably perfect. I think this is where they'll end up. Sneaky Snufflers plus 20. I think this is perfect. And Squig Herd plus 10. I think all of that's perfect. Um, so overall, I it seems like good changes to me, you know, but a couple of minor things, right? <laughs> you know, I think Fellwaters could go down. I just don't see myself using them. Stuff like that. But uh, I'll, I'll stop harping on that. Um, so then we move over to some individual FAQ changes. I'll just talk quickly about, I'm only going to highlight the ones that I think actually matter. Um, so we've got the change to, uh, Z I'm going to butcher this FYI, Z Zythar Kai Blood Sisters, basically the one everyone calls Cobra Kai. It's the, it's the snake faction. Um, and so when, Blood Sisters, uh, after they attack, they get to do this turn to crystal mortal wound thing, right? Now, it's th when they they also have a uh, that's that's on their war scroll. But this faction has a thing where when they die, they fight, right? So the question was, can they do that? Um, I don't think this is a good idea. I think what it should have. I think the the better answer because no one's taking this faction. First of all, second of all. Um, I think it should have been yes if they have not already fought, right? So if you charge into them and then they die, they should just get one crack at that sort of chestnut, you know? Um, or basically like just rule it so they only get to do it once per once per unit per fight phase. Um, but I guess that's more complicated. This is simpler, but the problem is is no one's taking that faction already, right? So. Yeah, I just like to encourage some variety, but here we go. Uh, we're on to the next one. Lumineth Realm Lords. Um, this one's interesting. For the blind, uh, the enemy battle tactic, do I need to successfully cast spells with four different wizards or can I cast four spells with two different wizards? You need to successfully cast spells with four different wizards. That's interesting. That might be more of a, I think it might be a combined thing where they're um, they're just they're just doing it for... Um, balance purposes and or and it could also be maybe for like kind of lore purposes or whatever i'm not really sure um it's interesting so anyway if an ability causes archmaid techless to re-roll a casting roll what happens in this case the re-roll would have no effect as the spell would still be automatically cast that seems fairly obvious to me um but you know like oh well there we are that that's what it is right uh you know i'm not sure we needed one but anyway uh, and then for Mogur Ma tribes, this one was kind of interesting. Uh, battle tactics, savor the taste. Change to, you cannot pick this battle tactic in the first battle round. You complete this tactic at the end of your turn if every friendly Mogur unit on the battlefield is hungry. Now, um, I believe the change was it did not have, you, can pick, you cannot pick it in the first battle round. Um, but I'm not really sure. Um... So, yeah, let me know that it, I just thought it was interesting, regardless of whether it was the change was to the ogre unit keyword or whether it was um, to the, uh, the the first battle round. It's just something that I think ogre players, it's it's going to affect like every ogre Ma Tribe player because it's a battle tactic. So that's why I wanted to highlight it real quick. Uh, Auric War Clans, we already actually went over this, but I just wanted to point out that like normally this is where you find um, the changes. So uh, the subtract one for hit rolls for gut rippers and down here, the dirty tricks. These are both located in your FAQ. Um, so if you have an individual army, not necessarily them, like there was a change to Skaven. It was just to a very specific thing called the Red Maw Plague. And I just didn't think it was going to affect enough people, nor was it a particularly interesting change. Uh, so I didn't highlight it. Now, this one I'm highlighting for a totally different reason. This one I'm highlighting is just like, how did this even get answered? Like we've had legitimate questions that we've sent into the FAQ team that did not get answered back in the day uh, or even more recently, like stuff that like legitimately people were arguing over. And this was like, okay, so this was, if I roll on the dark apotheosis result of the eye of the gods table during deployment, during deployment, right? So not once the battle started, because you know, how, like there's a bunch of rules that say once the battle started, this doesn't say that. It says during deployment. Does that count as happening during the battle? Like what? Like if you answer this, hey, bless you. You know, you wanted clarification. That's fine. But 
did it really? I mean, and I'll stop there. I just don't think this kind is the kind of thing that needs to be get answered. Um, but hey, I guess answering more is better than less, right? Like there's always going to be people asking crazy questions that common sense should tell you what to do. But I know there's a bunch of them in the Skaven battle tome that still haven't been answered that I think should be. Anyway, <laughs> um, so this one is for, um, I can't remember who it's for because now it's been so long ago. Oh, this is the core rules. Duh. <laughs> I was like, who's this for again? It seems really long. Um, okay, so this one, um, th these two changes are going to affect everyone. And I just thought it was compelling enough to do a super quick thing on it. Um 18.1 states, if an objective is on the border between two territories, it is considered to be within both of them. Does this mean these objectives are like what are considered to be wholly within both of them? No. Likewise, if an objective is on the border between one player's territory and one part of the battlefield, that is neither player's territory, commonly referred to as no man's land. So this is like one of those things where it is, it seems like common sense at first glance, but the rules otherwise implied the opposite of it so i'm really glad that they answered this um you know there it, it was something that created a lot of confusion because of the way that the original rule was stated in the core rules so this is a good thing to answer okay then the other one was can an individual unit contest both an objective and a terrain feature the answer is yes that's really cool it's good to know um i like that i don't you know because like uh you know, I think the idea was, you know, some battle tactics, you need to capture an uh, a train feature rather. So this would mean that they have to pick between one and the other. If it was not ruled this way, this is a clearly a good ruling, I think. And also a um, something that probably should have been clarified. So, but yeah, what did you guys think? Did you, was there something else that you thought that should have been answered that wasn't? Um, tell me in the comments below. Maybe you disagree with my take on, you know, whatever, the, the rally or the arcane tome. Like, I know it sucks for corn players and some other factions that have really bad. Uh, <laughs> you know, what's funny is it really sucks for, for cruel boys. They got a bump now, but arcane tome was like, like, what do you take now <laughs> for artifacts in that, in that faction? They're all one use only. Oh, man. That's hilarious. I didn't even think about that. So they give with one hand and they take it with the other. Um, but yeah, you guys let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll talk to you guys next time.